Hello everyone, welcome to another video today. I'm your host Sanj, and in this video, we're gonna discuss leads and how you can scrape thousands of leads from any website using Mapercom. Now what's great about this strategy is that it's low cost and it works in pretty much any website business directory that has a list of businesses, okay? So grab a cup of coffee, sit back down and let's get started. So as you can see, I'm inside of my make.com account and this is where all the magic happens, okay? so. Like I said, this works with any website. And there's a few modules here that we're going to use, right? The first one is the make request that's built in with HTTP inside of make. The next one's a text parser and you'll see why I need that. Then the main module, and this is a secret source, okay? It's going to extract all the data from any website and we're going to do it in a very specific format using very tight prompts, okay? Then the output's going to be a JSON because the output from the results of the OpenAI module is gonna be JSON, okay? And then I'm gonna save everything into Airtable. If you've been following me enough, if you if you have watched previous videos, you will know that I absolutely love Airtable. I use Airtable for pretty much any type of data store or data storage, and it's definitely my recommendation for this, okay? But you can use uh, Google Sheets, you can use Excel, you can use pretty much any format, right? You can, put it, you can even put it onto like a Google Docs if you wanted to, okay? So you can see that I've run it already. This is what the output looks like. Uh, it's this here and like I said, it works with any website, right? So that's the cool thing. Um, so for this example, I actually went on the Chamber of Commerce, which is the Greater New York Chamber of Commerce, okay? And the reason I chose this website is because there are thousands of leads on here, right? And it's all publicly available information. I'm not hacking anything. This is not unauthorized access, right? This is, I'm not signed into anything, right? You can see here, there's no login, right? This works with any publicly facing website, right? So you can think of any directories, uh, any kind of chamber of commerce. So most countries, most cities have a chamber of commerce. Certainly where I live, I just chose uh, New York because there's, you know, thousands, hundreds, if not hundreds of thousands of results. And by the way, this is one site, right? Uh, and one state, right? When you multiply this by the number of states, the number of sites, the number of categories for each business. I mean, it's ridiculous, right? You can get millions, millions of leads, okay? And that's the beauty of the system, okay? So in this website, they give us a few things. They give us a name of the business. They give us a description of the business you can see here. So this is One Green Nation. Not sure what it does, but there you go, if you want to read that. Then it's got a day contact, which is very important. Uh, we've got a phone number, excellent. We've got a website and we've got an address. So there's a few things you can do here, right? Now, the only thing that's missing is email, but you know, there's plenty of websites that have email addresses on there if you wanted to do like an email campaign, right? For this example, I'm just gonna assume that you're gonna go on the website um, and you can even do like mail. You could do like direct mail marketing, right? With their website and their address, uh, but you can also call them. You can do it, just do an avant call. And I'll show you another video how you can use these phone numbers to basically use, uh, create a an AI activated voice bot which is incredible. It'll actually call all these and it'll do the, the cold calling for you as well. Okay, and I'll, I'll do that in a future video. Uh, but then there's a lot of information here that we could use, right, in a marketing campaign. So I'm gonna delete all these just to show you that it works. And then we're gonna run it together and build it together, which is the most important step. Okay, so heading back into the make automation, I'm just gonna click run. Let's see this puppy in action. And the extract data is gonna be the most the longest module, right? Because there is a lot of data that's scraping off the website. Now, if you look at the business directory, business uh, directory from the New York Chamber of Commerce, then there's a lot of information on there, right? So it's gonna pass all that. And you can see here that it's writing it all to the Airtable. Okay, so if I go back into Airtable, you can see here, right? There's all this information. Now it does grab everything that is publicly available. For this one here, 365 data centers, there's obviously no contact name. You can check that manually as well. Um, so if you go down this list, where's the 365 data centers? Yeah, so you see there's no contact there, so that's fine, right? Uh, but where there is a contact, it will actually extract that information for you, okay? So how do we build a system like this? Okay, well, let's get started. I'm gonna create a new scenario. And the first thing I wanna do is get the HTTP module. Okay, so this is the built-in module from Make. Um, this is not gonna cost you anything extra. And then you wanna select the Make request. Okay, that's this module here. And then for URL, you just want to grab whatever the URL is. Okay, so this is just the directories page, so it's chamber of commerce forward slash business directory. You could actually filter by category. If you wanted to filter by page number, you can do all that. But for this example, I'm just going to get the default URL, okay, which is the business directory. And you'll see that here, okay? 
So that's the website here. It is a get method, you don't need to touch that. You don't need anything to do in headers or query strings or body type, but you do want to pass the response, right? And the reason for that is because, let me just move this out of the way, is because it says here that automatically passes response and converts uh, JSON and XML responses, right? So you don't need, basically, if you left this at no, you'd have to put in a JSON parser module, which is not a big deal, but it's just an extra step, which means that it's gonna use more operations inside of your account, right? So that's something to bear in mind. Also, the more modules you have, the more operations that you need, it's gonna take longer for the workflow to complete, okay? So just something to bear in mind, right? But you could leave that no, um, but for this, we're gonna use pass response, okay? Then you would just wanna run this, just to make sure that you get status 200. If you see a status 200, that means that it's worked. Okay, so you can, here you go, you've got a status uh, 200, which is great, that's exactly what we will need. Okay, so that's the first module. Then if we go back to the original, and I'm gonna use this as a, as a guide for you so you see exactly where we are. Um, the next one is a text parser, because if you go back into here, if you see the output, right? So the input is obviously whatever we've plugged in, which is the Chamber of Commerce website. The output's gonna be a bunch of text. Okay, so if we go to data, you can see it here, right? It's just HTML text. Now, there's not much we can do with this, right? Because it's HTML. So what we have to do is get the text parser, parser and we wanna, we wanna convert HTML to text. A very simple module, plug that in. And then for the mapping, you just wanna get the data, right? Where, wherever you see this doc type, HTML, that just, that's the header for the uh, HTML scraped file. And so you just wanna grab that, okay? And then just okay that. And then the first, next thing we'll do is rename these modules. Um, so this can just be scrape website or scrape the website. I should put scrape the website. Um, for the connectors and text parser and stuff, I don't really put anything in there because it's obvious what it does, right? This is a text parser. Okay, so then heading back to the original workflow, what do we need next? Okay, so this is the secret source, right? This is what's gonna extract all the data and put it in a particular format for us. Now, if you know me well, you know that I'm somebody who's a stickler when it comes to prompts, right? I wanna make sure that my prompts are nailed, right? Absolute nailed, because if you put garbage in, you're gonna get garbage out, right? Like, I wanna be very specific. And there are some issues with the public directories, right? and you'll see why when I show you the prompt, okay? so. If you know me well, you know that I love a developer system role because I like to set the context. So for this is, the context is you are a data extractor. That's it, plain and simple, right? You don't need to spend too long on here. Don't spend hours and hours kind of going fretting over this. It's just a simple one line context, okay? The next thing you wanna do is you want a, an assistant role. So the assistant role is your task is to extract the following fields from the text. Okay, the text is whatever the um, HTML has been passed, right? So we want a name. Uh, well, I haven't got the email, so let me just take that out. I was using that on another website, but this one doesn't have the email, so you can get that out. But if you do have email, or if there's any additional uh, fields, like I've seen some directories that have fax, uh, believe it or not, it's 2025, but yeah, people still use fax machines. Uh, so yeah, that, that could be something that you wanna, you wanna extract, right, if it's there. Um, I don't think these guys have it on this website, but let me just double check. Yeah, it's just phone number. They don't seem to have a fax, uh, fax number, okay, so that's fine. Um, and then we're gonna go back to, where are we? We're gonna go back to the original, I'll show you. I go through the prompt. Okay, so we want to extract the name, the URL, the address, physical address, and the phone number. Okay, because that's what's available to us. So respond with only the va valid JSON object. Okay, do not output dash 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 JSON. For some reason, this is outputting it in dash 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 JSON, which is not a valid JSON object. Okay, uh, because and it's probably because I'm using the Fora Mini. And the reason I'm using this is because it's a very simple operation, right? I don't want to be too complicated. I don't want to use the latest model of ChatGPT because it's, it's gonna, you're gonna basically overcook it, right? You don't need it to be the most powerful version of ChatGPT for this for this um, operation, right? For this workflow. You can use a basic one like 4 Mini, which is dirt cheap and it does the job, okay? But it just needs some additional context. So uh, you wanna, do, do not output the, the dash 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 JSON. Uh, remove, and I put that in, um, what do you call these? the kind of dog ears, the um, quotation marks, because that's what it is, right? I don't want that as an output. The next thing is remove white spaces, because I found that some of these directories, some of these websites, they, they're really old, right? They're not maintained, they're not up to date, and people are just generally just copy and pasting this, right? So sometimes you'll have white space at the end of here, or you have white space here, or in the name, or sometimes you have special characters. None of that's gonna work with JSON, right? Because JSON has to be clean, uh, because it's programming language, right? Um, so we don't want white spaces, we don't want non-white spaces, we don't want symbols and we don't want special characters, okay? If your 
directory that you're using or if any website you're using uses anything else like emojis, you want to add emojis into this uh, list here, okay? Because it's going to cause a problem with the JSON. Just remember, it has to be clean. It has to be a clean JSON object. Uh, if you cannot remove it for whatever, for whatever reason, just move on. Just move on to the next um, contact details, okay? And then what you want to do is you want to set it to, uh, let's put it here. And you want to give it into some variables, okay? So this is what we're going to export from this module here. Well, company name, and this is in the JSON format, okay? Uh, contact name, uh, email address, website URL, corporate address, and phone number. Okay, that's what we're going to pass, okay? And then you want to, you, you need to pass JSON module because then you're going to have to extract those fields and then you can save that into Airtable, okay? So next thing we're going to do in this module here is let's create a completion, which is the OpenAI module, and then create the API key if you haven't done that already. Um, if you look at one of our previous videos, I'll show you how to do that. Uh, but it's very straightforward. You just go to platform.api.com, go into the, I think it's the developer section or the API section, and just create a new key, give it a useful name, something like make.com, automations, and then paste the key inside of here, okay? Then for the model, you can use any model. Just bear in mind the latest models like o O1 Mini is gonna be the most expensive because it is the latest model, right? But over time, the costs come down. Uh, I'm still using 4 Mini and I'm, I'm fine with the, with the results. Okay, then let's just grab the prompts because I've already done them, right? So I don't want to type them out again in the interest of keeping this video as short as possible. Let's just wait for that to load. So I'm going to get the data extractor one. Okay, so let's get this one. Let's plug in this, close that. And then the next one's going to be an assistant. Okay. So head back into the original and I'm just going to copy this out because I spent a bit of time doing this. I mean, not that much time compared to previous prompts, but enough to basically uh, get rid of all the errors that I had with the JSON object, not accepting symbols, white spaces, etc., etc. Okay. For the text, because I'm copying this, I want to grab it from uh, my module here, which is to text. Okay. And that's this one here, okay? Then, um, why is this still red? Something I haven't accepted, let's see. We'll go back into the module, just make sure everything's there. For token completion, I'm just gonna set this to zero. And then we're gonna okay that. Okay, so it's so far so good. And remember, we wanna use the JSON pass module, okay? Because we are outputting it to JSON, right? So you just want to put in uh, JSON here, get the pass JSON module. And then for this JSON string, you just want to get the result, right? Because remember we told the prompt that we want to output it in those specific field names, right? So that's what we're going to do for that. And then we're just going to okay this. Okay, and this just means that you shouldn't have it as a last module, okay? The last one you want to do is just put it to wherever the output is. So I'm going to just going to select my existing Airtable and Let's just grab the key. The base is always the same. I always use the same base. I just have more tables. And then we're gonna grab, let's move this out the way. Website leads, okay? Or call it whatever you wanna call it. And then you just map the correct fields. Now, because I haven't run this, right, um, it hasn't got the the output for the JSON, okay? But normally you'd map wh whatever you see here. So I'll show you on the original one because I've already done it. I don't want to run it here because it's just going to use more operations. But you see here, right, it's outputted the company name because I created that field, right, in JSON. The contact name, the email address, if it's there. If it's not, if it's null, just leave it. Website URL, corporate address, phone number, okay? So what I'm doing inside of this Airtable is I'm just literally mapping those fields from the past JSON module, okay? So company name, email address, URL, address, and phone number. So it should look something like this. Now you can do this in, like I said, in Excel, you could do it in Google Sheets. Uh, I'm just doing it in Airtable for the sake of this example. And basically, I mean, look at this website, right? Like this, there's all these letters, right, and numbers, plus look at all these pages. There's like, I mean, I think there's like, I mean, I don't even know because I've literally been clicking 
this button to take it right to take it to the end and i haven't got to the end right so i really don't know how many businesses there are on this website i'm probably for estimating that there's hundreds of thousands right um that you can you can scrape and crawl and you could do this for any country any state and there's multiple businesses there's hundreds of these websites right there's directories um, there's pay directories there's free directories right literally guys you have got unlimited leads on tap okay so go out there implement this automation that you see here and go crush it right go pitch your your products your services to these businesses right they are already on a business directory so you know that they want they want to be pitched to right because this is with their consent so if you really like this video just please leave me a comment share like and the most important thing for you to do right now is to subscribe to the channel okay your subscriptions give me confidence it helps me to generate ideas and obviously comments anything that you leave i will read i will comment to every single one and if you want me to build something in the future just leave me that in the comments below and i'll tackle that in the next video okay so thank you for watching and hopefully i'll see you on the next one